Welcome to the Italian Wine Podcast. This episode is brought to you by Vinitali International Wine and Spirits Exhibition. The 54th edition of Vinitali was held from 10 to the 13th of April. If you missed it, don't worry. Go to vinitaliplus.com for on-demand recordings of all the sessions from the exhibition. And remember to save the date. The next edition of Vinitali will be held from the 2nd to the 5th of April 2023. Let's get this started. Hello, boys and girls. My name is Stevie Kim. This is the Italian Wine Podcast. And what we're going to do today is to give you a skinny recap for those, well, at the highlights anyway. So for those who were unable to attend Vinitaly this year. So we'd like to kind of give you an idea what it was all about. And I have with me today my podcast team, namely Joy Livingston. Hello. Hey, Joy. What's up? I am very well. Thank you, Stevie Kim. How are you? What about that cold? Oh, no. I'm good. That's fine. It wasn't COVID. I didn't catch, like, you know, the dreaded scourge. Okay. So, all right. Excellent. COVID free. And then we have Richard Hoff. Yes. Yes. Good morning. Richard, tell, remind the audience who you are. Yeah, I'm Richard um, from Glasgow. And now we can't tell I'm, um, by your accent. I'm basically a copywriter and translator, I suppose. You're um, part of our editorial Part team. of your editorial staff, yeah. Yes. You're in Verona. Okay, excellent. And we have Cynthia Chaplin. Hello, everybody. How are you, Cynthia? I'm good. So, Cynthia, of course, why don't, why don't you introduce yourself? You do it much better than I do. So, I'm Cynthia, also part of the team here in Verona. I do editorial projects and work with Via, and I'm the host of Voices on the podcast, and sort of the person who floats around the office doing all the bits and pieces that come up. Okay, excellent. And of course, we have other members at the office, but we kind of he- here have people who, quote unquote, speak English this morning, because I could be bothered recruiting the others, because I'm not feeling so nice this morning. I'm not, I'm not in a bad mood, but just, you know, I want to get this over with. So let's start. Vinitaly, we'd like to call it the Vinitaly Marathon, because it actually starts on the 1st of April. It started on the 1st of April. Yeah, April Fool's Day, I know. So I know many people think Vinitaly is only four days from that this year was from 10th till the 13th of April, from Sunday to Wednesday, four days. But for us, Vinitaly actually starts on the 1st of April. From the 1st to the 3rd, it is what we call five-star wines and wine without walls. That's three days of wine competition. And then immediately following that, from the 4th till the 7th of April, it is the flagship Vinital International Academy certification course. And then, of course, we we had a day of, quote-unquote, pause, but everyone was working, of course. And we, on the 9th, which was the Saturday, we had the Opera Wine event, the premier opening event to Vinitaly. Okay, so let's start from the beginning. Five Star Wines. Tell us a little bit about uh, Five Star Wines, who the judges were, how many were they, and how many producers participated. Can you give us a little overview of that, Cynthia? Uh, Of course. So Five Star Wines was Mm -hmm. uh, a big selection this year. We had 2,300 wines from 745 producers all across Italy. Uh, Our judging panel was composed of 72 wine professionals, eight of whom are masters of wine. We had a great six-member general chair panel with Caro Maurer, the first uh, German MW, um, female. female German MW, um, and the judging took place over three days, and out of our 2,300 wines, 960 scored 90 and above. Excellent. 
And can you give us the names of the awardees? I mean, at least the trophies. Sure, of course. The best wine overall was from Cantina della Vernaccia, and it was Vernaccia di Oristano Giudiches. Uh, the best red was from Marchese di Cantaneo. And the wine was Adorno Giustiniani, Gabbiano DOC Reserva, a Matilde Giustiniani. Wow, you're butchering all of this. Sorry, I, <laughs> I put it in Giustiniani. Giustiniani. Yeah. Uh, Maybe we needed an Italian after all. <laughs> okay, go ahead. The yeah. best white was from Terry Cortesi Moncaro, and it was a Verdicchio dei Castelli di Iesi, DOC Fondiglie. And the best sparkling was Terre di San Vernazio, Fortunato, Valdo Biadene, DOCG, Superiore, Di Cartese, Spumante, Brut. Okay, excellent. Um, so for those of you who are listening, if you're interested in having the details and the list of all of the awardees of uh, Five Star Wines and Wine Without Walls, you can find, of course, on our website, Five Star Wines, um, dot IT. You can get the complete list of the awardees. Um, and you can follow the, um, there's a huge, of course, social media going on. So that's five star lines. All right, number five. All right. And then, of course, we had Vinicius International Academy, um, which Jacopo Fanciulli, Land Left Us. I haven't even seen it. Has anyone seen Lan? No, I messaged him. And what did he say? Oh, no, I just needed him to help me fix Himalaya. Yeah, we didn't we couldn't care less. <laughs> I'm like, help me fix this. And he's like... He's only should... worked here five years. Yeah, now he... every, he's forgotten already. Yeah, well, he has, because he texts me back and he says, you should just write to them and complain. I'm like, but... Like in what language? In Thank Chinese, you very much. in Mandarin. I'm like, uh... Um, nice. Thanks. This man. is so, such land. I had to actually ping him, tap him, because my WeChat, when I changed my phone, of course, my WeChat, he had re uh, registered it under his phone number. So Our Himalaya is also registered under his phone number. Yeah, we got to take care of that. Lan, I hope you're listening to this episode. We need to have a small chat with you, buddy. Okay? <laughs> you cannot be hiding out in Piemonte any longer. Oh. We will find you. Wherever you are. I'm surprised we, he, he didn't pop by during Vinicius. Anyways, because he's always around. Anyway, so let's talk a little bit about Vinicius International Academy, the flagship edition. This was the first, the bona fide. We did a flagship edition last year in June. But how was it different this year? Give, give me some numbers and contextualize how it went. First of all, we had Sarah back, which was fabulous. Yep, Sarah Heller. Um, she is a great, great, great faculty member whom we've missed dearly because she was locked down more or less in Hong Kong. Now she's moved to Seattle, Washington. So we will be seeing her more from stateside for sure. And of course, Henry Dubar returned. Francesco, who had a small part last year, translating mostly Professor Attilio Scienza, he is now in Argentina. I don't know what's up with that. I have to try to understand what's going on. Originally, also from Hong Kong. So tell us, give, give, do the little recap thingy. I'll do the little recap thingy. This year's Via Verona was was fantastic, as Stevie said, to have all the faculty back together: Henry, Sarah, and Professor Attilio Scienza, all in person. Uh, and thanks to Richard for translating Professor Ore <laughs> during <laughs> during the, the master classes. Uh, we had fifty six students in person. And 21 of them passed and became Italian wine ambassadors, which is the biggest number of any class we've had to date. I need to correct you, Cynthia, because the 21 includes actually the two ambassadors who are required. They were going for their expert level, Ashley and Ezra. But um, no one became an expert this year. It's tough. It's tough exam. It is. Um, it's a hard one. Yeah. So 19 new ambassadors and, and two who were already ambassadors. Yeah, we didn't take their pin back. <laughs> yeah. I'm not that cruel. I know they, everyone think I'm like Crudelia of Vinital <laughs> International Academy. But So yeah, that was pretty successful, I said. Uh, we also did some master classes with our supporters. Again, thank you very much to our supporters. Do you recall who they were? It was the Consortio of Lugana, uh, Sicilia Doc. Mon uh, Montefalco, Montefalco. Franciacorta, 
French Accord, and that was it. No, is by uh, which is oh, yes. the Italian Wine Signature Academy. Academy. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, and so we've started doing this as of last year. Instead of because of COVID, we started doing um, master classes for our supporters, which I think um, the audience um, appreciate better in a way, right? They Absolutely. think there's a bigger value add, so they get to uh, have guided tastings with both um, Sarah and Henry as well as some members present, often also the producers themselves. This time at VIA, the students tasted over 130 wines in, yeah, so. in the three days of classes before the exam. So that's that's really a great opportunity for people to taste Italian wines that maybe they can't get in their home country. And actually, you know, I know uh, for the VIA community listening out there, I know some of you have written to us, uh, reached out to us, asking, how do I become a judge at Five Star Wines? It, it is mostly, we have like kind of the steady panel chairs and of course the super judges. We have the six super judges and the only new super judge was Carol Maurer. The rest, Gabriele Gorelli, Daniele Cernilli, Bernard Berchi, Robert Joseph, and of course Pedro Ballesteros were on for from uh, four of them from the get-go. And then Gabriele and Daniela joined as of three years ago. So the super judges remain um, the same, but the other judges, and especially the associate judges, we try to give an opportunity for students who are enrolled in Vinatil International Academy so that they can get kind of a practice tasting sessions as their their score does not um, carry any um, weight into the final, um, gets averaged into the final score. And then, of course, we have the Vinatil International Academy uh, community members, often experts, uh, ambassadors, and so forth. So obviously now that we have um, close to 300 certified Italian wine um, ambassadors, we cannot invite every single one of them. But we do rotate and give everybody a little bit of a chance. If you're interested, of course, please reach out to us and we will take your um, candidacy into consideration. Okay, so of course, if you want more information about Vinital International Academy, please go to um, vinitalinternational.it, and you get all the information there as well. As I'm actually looking at the events page, which, which, which is kind of the calendar for all of the vinitally related um, events all year round. And Vinatil International is very social media heavy, so you can find it on Insta, you can find it on LinkedIn, on Twitter, etc., etc. Okay, then let's move on to Opera Wine. Who's going to talk about Opera Wine? I can talk about Opera Wine. It was on April 9th after our pause day, which wasn't really a pause day, as you said. Um, and that's our grand gala kickoff event for Vin Italy um, in collaboration with Wine Spectator. And this year, Wine Spectator chose 130 producers to represent the top Italian wines. And 1,500 guests attended the event, where we also had Allison Napius, Tom Matthews, Jeffrey Linden. Lindenbluth. I have a story about him. And yeah, Miriam. What about- what about him? What about him? Okay, this is so embarrassing, and it's actually kind of funny. Uh, he's like the, the top wine spectator editor guy, right? Yeah, he's yeah, taking he over, over from Tom. Tom Matthews. Okay, well, he happened to be coming in the door at some point in this time, uh, and I was walking in with Margarita, the, the podcast producer that preceded me. Yes. And, you know, she just came to visit, and, you know, we were going to have lunch, and, I had no idea who this guy was. I've right. never seen him before. I never met him. And I, you know, he's like, oh, you know, how do I, how do I get out? How do I do this? I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm talking. And I'm, and I'm, I'm like, I'm all in my podcast mode. I'm like, you know, looking for interviews. And I'm like, I've never seen this guy before. This looks like a great interview. <laughs> so I'm like talking to him, like, you know, and I'm like, yeah, you know, we're down in hall six, day eight. And, you know, if you ever get tired of talking to people, you can come and chill and la, la, la. (laughs) And this guy's looking at me like, you know, okay, you know, like he's super friendly. But then he walks away after we helped him and Margarita looks at me and she's like, oh, my God, don't you know who that is? And I'm like, no. (laughs) She's like, 
how can you use the word chill with Jeffrey Lindenmuth? Lindenmuth. Yeah. Lindenmuth. And I'm like, who? <laughs> <laughs> and she's just, she buried her, her hands. She's like, I'll be trying to say hello to that man all day. And <laughs> I'm like, oops. <laughs> the poor, poor Jeffrey. He has catapulted into his first Vinitaly ever. And I think it was traumatizing because, first of all, he had just uh, come in, uh, landed on Malpensa, came directly to the um, the conference, the press conference, the opening of Opera Line, and he showed up, and I immediately just gave him a mic, right. and he started speaking. And so, you know, um, I don't know if everybody knows our listeners, it's Tom Matthews um, from Wine Spectator, the executive um, um, managing um director for Wine Spectator, um, who has been, of course, a reference point for us with Bruce Sanderson, senior editor, and also Alison Napius for the past 10 years. This is our 11th year of, um, 11th edition of Opera Line. And so it goes way, way back. We have kind of a routine um, and it is really a lovely event that we we absolutely adore. Um, so he's kind of an outsider. He's This is his primer. He comes in directly from the airport, and I give him a mic. So then he speaks, and he speaks about how he loves Italy, and he loves in particular two things, Ducati, fine, and Beretta, oh, the rifle. Guns. But it, which is very, it departs very radically from Tom Matthews, who I call the yoga man, and he hates me because he does meditation twice a day in the morning and in the in the evening. So seriously, yeah. So um, yeah, and I had unveiled that in another press conference, which he wanted to kill me for. So now, so he, um, I think, you know, has come to Italian wine world in a very intense uh, way during Opera Wine and the days following the Italy. So I'm glad he came. Um, I think it was great so that he was able to be introduced to the Italian wine producers, the community, and um, I think Tom was doing a bit of, you know, the hand-holding and introducing him to other producers that were. And so, of course, he hangs out. He hung out a lot um, at our office. So glad you made that spark and yeah. love connect I'm sure you, he will remember me now <laughs> yeah <laughs> the, the woman who invited him to chill yeah exactly yeah, well, I, chill Jeff <laughs> <laughs> okay so let's go on um, to the Vinitaly oh no you know what uh, excuse me Richard you are silent yes but what did you do what was your role at Vinitaly International Academy um, yeah mainly um, translating for Shane so when he did the, the master class at the beginning okay. and apart from that we, we had a little book stand at the, at the back of the auditorium where we were selling our books and okay that. but tell us what you did with um, Shinsa what was the, um, the thing the, and, that's got, is, and Joy is that going out on the podcast not the one from Via the uh, why not no one recorded it well, it would have been recorded by uh, Andrea, mm -hmm. but I don't think, I don't know, we, we have uh, the master class, I don't know what it was called, the seminars that happened on the 10th and the 11th. Right, that was during Vinitaly. Uh, that I'm putting out starting this coming uh, week. This would, you know, the, the one that uh, for Vinitaly International Academy, if you can recoup that, I would love a replay on the podcast because then it can go on the Italian wine essentials as, you know, especially for course material. All right, so tell yeah. us what was the, what was the, the, the uh, topic, topic? for this one was the Invisible Wines of the Via Francigena, and it was basically a, a pilgrimage or a journey along the, the ancient pilgrims route, to exploring the geology, the soil, the climate, the history. Yeah, um, the usual geeky. Wine. Very, very geeky, and to be honest, I was somewhat out of my depth, I think, on a lot of the You were struggling? I was struggling with some of the Welcome to the club. 
Nobody and understands you. From a linguistic point of view, it, it was a challenge. But everyone seemed to love it. I mean, all the right. participants, all the um, students, they kept, kept came up to me and said, we loved Shinsa's um, session. Oh, well, that, that's a relief. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. I, so, and even I, I spoke to one or two people afterwards, and I, I got that impression as well. So yeah, so... Credit to, to Shinsa. Um, he delivers complex material, but in a compelling way. Yeah. So listen, can you just explain to our audience what Fun Shi Jinai is? Yeah, it's, it's basically um, a pilgrim's route that goes from Canterbury in England to um, Rome. And this would have been a, a route that the, the ancient pilgrims would have followed um, to seek forgiveness for their sins. Um, and along the way, it, it, it's incredible really how Shenzhen explained um, some of the, the most important and historical centres for wine production in Europe have emerged. So the focus of this one, this session really was those those um, wine producing regions in Italy that have established along the routes of the old monasteries um, um, along the way. Okay, great. So by the way, some of this stuff will be um, integrated into the new edition of Italian Wine Unplugged. Is that correct, Cynthia? Yes, That's okay, you're correct. coordinating this. So That's absolutely tell us where correct. we are and when are we expecting to have the new edition because the first edition was very, very extremely heavy and it was um, 2017. So after fast forward five years and we are now finally ready to release a revised version. Tell us a little bit about that. Sure. Italian Wines Unplugged 2.0 is is getting ready. Uh, Jacopo and I have been working on that. We've asked our Italian wine ambassador community to help us with rewrites of the must-know grapes, and that material has all arrived pretty much now. So we're compiling that. We're taking material from Scienza and from previous books that he's written, like um, Sangiovese and Lambrusco, and uh, native wines, and putting together some of the history, putting together some of the soil, which have become important components in our VIA course. So those will be integrated into the 2.0 edition of the book. Um, reorganizing the structure of the book so it follows the course a bit more, taking some advice and suggestions from Henry and Sarah, because this is the book that they need to uh, use for the students. So... Yeah, it should be ready uh, to be looked at and checked over for corrections um, towards the middle of June, middle end of June. So we hope to have 2.0 out before the end of 2022. Yeah, absolutely. Not hope. We no, love. we have to yes, because we've you. been told thank by you. Stevie that we have to. <laughs> thank you very much for that clarification. <laughs> so it will. I just yeah, I just wanted out. to make it sure will be that out. was the message. Okay, yeah. that's on the record now. Isn't yes, it? yes, exactly. No Jacopo and I want to keep our job, so <laughs> two point will be out in twenty twenty two. Excellent, love it. I love the enthusiasm. Okay. No, I just want to give a shout out also to the Viet community because I know you were saying thirty members uh, from the Viet community have contributed to the revision of the grape entries, right? Yeah, and you know who you are. I'm very grateful. Um, they worked fast and they worked to a template, so all of the entries will be much more um, streamlined and, and identical, giving the same sort of information, as well as benchmark producers. Okay, very good. So moving right on to um, Vinitaly, which happened, it started on the first... At the no, I'm sorry. The 10th of um, April for four days, 10, 11, 12, 13. So, I mean, of course, so much has happened, 88,000 attendees. It seems a lot and little at the same time because um, the past edition in the peak it went up to even 150. The last edition, I believe, was more like 110, 120. Um, so 88 seems like a lot, but in a way much more measured in terms of attendees. This, of course, has to do with COVID. Uh, there is a war going on. There are a lot of nasty things going on. And I was holding my breath. I didn't do my COVID test until it was over. Luckily, 
I was afraid it was going to be a super spread event, and then I, I, and then the government was going to come with their soldiers and shut down the Venetly. I was just really, really scared shit. But finally, we have overcome those four days, and we have. Come to a close on the thirteenth of April. Who wants to talk about a little bit about what the highlights of Vinitaly? So there, Vinitaly, there are events, right? There are tasting events. There are some conferences. In addition to, of course, all of these B two B meetings that are、um, organized both by Vinitaly, Ice,、um, um, which、uh, is now called Italian Trade Agency. So there's a A big flux of incoming、um, attendees, trade professionals,、um, and of course, B two B meetings organized directly by the producers themselves, which were about four thousand this year. So let's start with like some of the wine tasting that we were directly involved, or the master classes. So Richard, you had two classes with、um, Shane Sat. What were they? Tell us a little. Give give us a yeah, quick overview、um, of that. The first one was entitled Science and Prejudice, and that was on the theme of diversity and fake science and racism. And、um, one of one of Shane's most、um, topical、um, areas of of argument at the moment.、Um, So that that was that was the first one with that underlying message that whether it's wine or people, there's no seria A or seria B as、uh, Shenza likes to say,、um, and that was here、um, in our in our auditorium, and it was it was pretty well attended, and also I think live streamed as well. So,、mm-hmm. um, and we will, and we're going to replay it also on the podcast. Yes,、yeah. um, the. The other one was on the origins and structure of the Italian classification system, so looking at DOCs and DOCGs, and of course, being Shen's, I went back to the ancient Greeks and Romans,、um, but brought us right up to date with the latest EU regulations, the structure of the the national committee that that、um, legislates on these things. And then concluded with some of the the big issues facing the the industry at the moment, things like climate change and sustainability, electronic labeling and genetic engineering. So quite a mixture really from Shenza, the, the the breadth and the depth and the the scope of what he has to say was really、um, quite incredible to to witness and to try to translate. Yeah. So the first day,、um, it is also based on a book that you're translating currently. Yeah. So let's, which and we have also a series of podcasts. Is that correct, Joy? Yeah.、Uh, I have, How is that organized?、Uh, that has been coming out.、Uh, there are ten. Well, actually, there are ten chapters that he recorded.、Um, the first episode went out last week, and it's chapters one, two, and three. Sorry, the week before last. No, last week and this week,、uh, chapter four. Next week, chapter five. It'll go up to chapter ten. I've I wanted to sort of start it off with a bang,、uh, mm-hmm. you know, first three chapters all in one go, and、uh, and then we're just gonna. They're really short, which is great because there's like a lot of information in each one,、um, and、uh, of course Richard's fantastic, soothing Glasgow <laughs> accent just makes it all the better. Yeah, we do this、uh, book readings basically. It's a book. It's a narration, reading, yeah.、Right. Exactly.、Uh, for those who don't want to pay for a book and not support the publishing industry, so all of you,、Boo. I'm talking to you. You <laughs> can at, at least listen free, free content on Italian Wine Podcast. Okay. Then there were some other tasting.、Um, the first day, of course, there were the iconic woman in wine. Cynthia, why don't you talk about that? What was what was that? Why was it? Why was it called the iconic woman? So iconic women in Italian wine was、uh, for me one of the most exciting and sort of super cool events during Vin Italy because nothing like this had ever happened before. Uh, it was Stevie's brainchild, so it was Alison Napius from Wine Spectator and Monica Larner from Robert Parker's Wine Advocate, and they are two of the top journalists in the world. And of course, they're both women.、Um, 
Not ever before have those two magazines collaborated on anything. And as Monica said, um, she felt very smug that her male colleagues would never have pooled their resources to do an event like this. So Monica and Allison uh, moderated a discussion with seven of the top female um, wine producers from Italy. So we had Marlisa Allegrini, uh, Chiara Bosques, we had Albiera Antinori, Elena Fucci, Elisabetta Foradori, uh, Ariana Occhipinti, and they all brought signature wines from vintages that meant something important to them, uh, dates that were special, years that were special, and they discussed how women communicate differently, and you know, let's not put too fine a point on it, but actually better. Um, about wine and and the heritage and and sort of the soulfulness of Italian wine, and they all talked about what they were doing, what was happening in their winery. Some of them are are passing their winery on to their next generation. Some of them are the next generation who just had their winery passed on to them. Um, so very very interesting. We also had uh, Priscilla Incisa della Rocchetta was there uh, talking about Sassicaia. Uh, so we had we had a great time sort of going over what women contribute and it was it was very relevant you know, Monica had tested positive for covid the day before and was quarantining in her hotel in in Verona so we zoomed her in because we've all become that flexible and agile and able to pivot and we held the event just as as we had hoped to with a full audience uh, there were about I'd say 85 people in the room uh, tasting through these incredible wines and listening to these women um, banter with each other. It was really exceptional to, to see them, you know, talking informally and really from their heart uh, and having Allison and Monica there to, to sort of corral them and, and moderate the stories. Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, I still need a bit of time to process what actually happened uh, because for me, they're, they are, my heroes. They're my rock stars personally. And the fact that we were able to pull this off, it's for me, it's a personal milestone. So I, I don't really have an opinion about this right now. Probably I'll need some time, more time. I do have ever want to thank each each and every one of them. They all got on board and it and it was it they donated not just their wines and their time, but their stories. So it was not so much about, of course, they poured iconic um, vintage wines, but it was much more about the stories. And I love the fact that there was absolutely no, no mansplaining involved. It was not about that. It was about them and the stories and the wine. So if you want to catch that, um, all of this, both the Shensa and Iconic Woman, we will be replaying it on the Italian Wine Podcast. But you can also find it on um, Vinitaly Plus form, um, platform. It is available on demand. Yes, Joy. Hello. No, it starts tomorrow. Oh, I it starts it. tomorrow. Too. Okay. No, tomorrow so can you... I, I would just add as the, the token <laughs> male voice in this conversation. Yeah, you are the token male. <laughs> tokenistic male. I, I agree 100% with everything you said about the, the iconic women session, especially in relation to the superiority of women and communication, but in every department as well, I would. Okay, I would you can still keep your job. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Richard. Thank Off. you. Okay. <laughs> So, um, so those sessions will be coming out soon. So if you are driving and you don't want to search the net for this, e these events, you can at least listen to what uh, the discussion was all about. Again, you know, it was the first time ever that something like this happened in wine history. So I hope you guys get a chance to at least to listen in. And we are grateful to be able to replay in collaboration with Vinitsky. Okay, and then what else? Yes, Joy. 
There were <laughs> you are the podcast producer. I'm just you know coming in to. Well, you you yeah were, yeah yeah you are doing a good job. Um, I just wanted to say there was also uh, Joe Bastianich and his his music festival. Yeah, he's yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, Tell us we, about that. Okay, no, that was cool. Yeah. I'm a fan. Yeah, I know you're a fan. <laughs> That, like, first show, you took a photo with him, right? No. You've never introduced me. He's here, like, every year, and every year I'm hoping that you will introduce me. Why didn't you tell me? I thought you know him already. I've never met the man. I, Why don't you? I got a selfie he... with him. Oh, my God. Even with your whole set of selfie. For my kids. My kids love him. They watch him on... Um, Master Chef. No. Italy's Got Talent. Oh. Um, <laughs> what is that? It's like the... A talent show. Um, I don't watch television. No, I don't oh either. My kids do. My kids absolutely love it. So when they had the, I mean, I, the Joe was in the office, they said, Daddy, you need to get a photo with Joe. Oh, my God. And I, so I did. That's hilarious. He was, he was a bit, I don't know. Um, Unavailable? No, he was available, but. Like, who the fuck are you? He didn't seem to like think about the idea of having a selfie with me. Oh, yeah. I don't know why. Yeah, I don't know either. See, Jose Rallo was there at, at Joe's Music Bash in our office, and I was so much more interested in talking to Jose Rallo. She's like my hero. So I'm like, yeah, Actually, Joe. the music was pretty good. The this music yeah. was all right. Yeah. yeah. He has a good band. His, uh, there was somebody, I couldn't see the guy's face, but there that's was like the, the guy with the beard in the yeah. middle. That's a classic. I wow. think this is definitely a better fit for him. Yeah, because I heard Because he had other bands before, I think. I heard him at the Murano Wine Festival a couple years ago, remember? Yeah, it was bad. Well, I, would, I wouldn't <laughs> describe it as bad. Joe, I hope you're not... I still love you, but, you know, that was just not... It, no, I, I didn't... I didn't... I think it was probably uh, not the best sound. Yeah. And it was at, like, night. It was. It was in a tent. Yes. Right? Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Anyways, I think definitely this, I actually enjoyed it. I was just upstairs in my office listening to it. I wanted to put on headphones, but then I was like, oh, no, I can actually listen to this. He got a write-up, actually, uh, at Spectator. So, yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. I think he did a concert uh, in town. He did, yeah, he did a concert in town as well. Yeah, he did the Vinicius in the City, which he has been doing uh, for some time now. So um, we should get him back and have live music in the office every now and then. No, I don't think he's not going to do live music just for I, the office. I, you guys, there, there's YouTube, you know, just <laughs> go on YouTube. I really want uh, Mark to interview his mom. Lydia. Lydia. Yes. Yeah, let's make that happen. Let's okay. bring Lydia. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Can we get back to Vinitaly Rapa? Yes. Okay. Um, and then what else um, happened in terms of taste? There was Super Tuscans. Oh, yeah, that's Super Tuscans oh, that's right. with yeah. uh, Gorelli. I actually posted the photo with all the. It, he seems so fierce with like you know all those like Super Tuscan bottles. Um, he had crazy eyes in that photo. Yeah, he looked possessed. <laughs> It's the real Gabriele Gorelli because he seems like such a sweet, nice guy. He kind of reminds me of like... He's probably a psycho killer. <laughs> no, he reminds me. Do you remember in the 80s they had those like little trolls with like with like those great hair? Remember for yes, kids? Yes. He kind of reminds me of a sweet little toy from the 80s. Except he's like six foot two. <laughs> I hope he doesn't hold that against me. But seriously, it's like it's. I used to collect them when I was a kid. And <laughs> listen, it, it's, it was pretty impressive lineup. We it was like four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, sixteen incredibly uh, old vintages uh, for this new consortium. So um, yeah, he looks possessed. I actually, um, I, I grabbed it yesterday. People seem to love it. He seems to be crazy in that. Okay, so then that happened. What else happened? Well, we got we had some networking moments with the VIA community, mm -hmm. and um, and just bunch a bunch of tastings. So we're going to be. I mean, we are going to be replaying some of this stuff. And we had what? Oh my god! Yes. One more thing happened. Yes. Sorry. We had the um, Maze Row wine. Oh, yes. Maze Maze Row. How can you forget that? You completely. I didn't forget that. Yes. Okay. I'm, they wanted a that. soft launch. I'm, I'm hanging on soft launch. No, Maze Row Wine Merchant, uh, which is a portfolio from Gallo. And they came to our office and presented their top seven producers, which was Arjano, Ratti from Piemonte, Piero Pan from Suave. Tornatore from Sicilia, 
Allegrini, also from Veneto, um, Brancaia from Tuscany, and Yerman is also in their portfolio, but they were not present at the at the launch. So we had a great tasting of um, some vintages from that portfolio that were important to them, uh, tasting sort of their, their signature wines as well. And we had um, Christina Kelly from ex, ex-Gallo VP, as well as John Irwin and... Um, our Italian wine ambassador. Yeah, so. our Italian wine ambassador, who is working with them on the launch, uh, and Giovanni from Gallo, who is their global sales rep and, and sales director. Uh, doing the launch. So fantastic new portfolio, um, fantastic new new range and, and a new delivery method for, for the storytelling, the heritage and innovation of those seven producers. So we actually had two additional um, tastings uh, to welcome the judges. The first night we had Berda uh, with all the orange wines. Uh, they even opened like a real, I can't remember, 1964. I, I were I think it was, I was there, it was older, it was 1952, Something. I yeah. think. I have a picture. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so we had that tasting for the judges of Five Star Wines. Then, of course, the tradition, as we, we've we been doing this for the past 10 years or so, and uh, Bottega del Vino, the, the uh, Amarone... Um, historic girl, family. Historic yeah. family. They hosted in Bottega, because, of course, they are the actual owners of Bottega del Vino, the... the the Mecca, the the place which represents also Benicio in a way. Which is a great um, event because I have never been able to walk through Bodega del Vino in that sort of fashion. They closed the place down just for that event um, and really graciously offered all their wines and you could talk to the producers and, and actually see the place itself. It was very, very um, important opportunity to be able to be there. Yeah, and we had the producers pour and explain and get in touch with us so the Aravia um, candidates. So that was that was one of the highlights as well. So Via there, students loved that. Yeah, they so all we, loved it. And we thank the uh, the family, the historic family of Amarone for that um, as well of their generosity. So that is it. That is a wrap for now. Uh, we just thought that it would be nice for those. Who weren't able to attend? This was, of course, a very particular year uh, for all of us, up because of COVID and because of the war. But Vinitaly did forge ahead. There are a lot of interesting content that you can access for free, uh, both on Vinitaly Plus platform as well as Italian Mind podcasts in audio format. So that's it. Signing off now. That's a wrap. So hope, hopefully, you guys can make it next time. All, everything, all the information, um, we're going to try to resume our normal lives now, getting back to all of the post-production, which there are lots of. I'm actually posting some photos every day. Yes, Joy Livingston. Yeah, just before we go, don't forget to mention that uh, because, of course, post-production includes videos because Mama Jumbo Shrimp, our sister channel on YouTube. What are you releasing this weekend? Tomorrow we will, uh, today, we are releasing a teaser to, uh, be, the, it's called the Italy che- Teaser. Oh, uh, with Dina Bologna. Uh, yeah, exactly. And Dina, it, be careful. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's going out tonight. And what about the Cats months. Cats video with Steve Boy where he's not, I'm not listening to I, him? I and, promise to schedule, well, first of all, Dino Bori's interview will be tomorrow. On right, the, on Saturday. Friday, Saturday, 6 p.m., I have decided blanket 6 p.m. is the golden hour that I will release all videos on the Mama Jumbo Shrimp channel on a Friday or a Saturday or both. But um, yeah, next next week I will I will um, re- I will release that uh, very hilarious video of you and uh, Steve, Steve at yeah. Cat's Deli in New York. Yeah. That is one not to miss. Uh, everybody who's listening, that video is absolutely great. Awesome. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. All right. So, um, so looking forward to seeing you here or there. We will be launching Vinicius International Academy um, in London. I believe in Germany. We're trying to figure out. We're trying to recoup Hong Kong. They're still in lockdown, as well as China. Um, also, stateside, we'll still be doing something as well. Um, so look out for that. We are still doing the Ambassador's Corner on Clubhouse every Thursday, which gets replayed. 
huge, huge um, lessons. On the congratulations to all the Italian wine ambassadors for that. Mama Jumbo Shrimp, we are going to now resume our publishing of the um, of the the videos. So to we'll do a little bit of catch up on that. We have two new books coming out: Italian Wine Unplugged. Which will, it's the revision 2.0, but it's actually a new book in a way. It's not just a revision. We have many, many contributions from the community. We have Vine and Prejudice, which Richard is um, editing at the moment, and that will be coming out um, at the same time before the summer. Before um, the, the summer, summer the beta, absolutely, yeah. before the summer. You were talking about end of the year, but before the summer, it will be out, both of these things, in one way or another. Otherwise, nobody goes on holidays. <laughs> so that is for it for now. A lot of exciting things happen. We're working on a few special projects as well. But, you know, so stay tuned. Keep in touch. And if you want to get in touch with the VIA community, both Cynthia and Jacobo, that's VIA at JustDoTheWork.it for Italian wine podcast it's info at italianwinepodcast.com and then what do you do richard nothing okay nothing. that's no, it I've been don't thinking, get in touch with richard. This point in the we are absolutely I know my place. All, yeah we are absolutely all over you guys do me a favor go on spotify and um follow us uh, because we got delisted okay, and we have to, have to mention that yes we need more time. yeah because we have to start Please. all over again so anyways we still love you thank you for supporting us and we will see you next time ciao ragazzi bye, bye. bye. thanks for listening to this episode of the italian wine podcast brought to you by Vinitali international wine and spirits exhibition the biggest drinks trade fair in the world Save the date, the next edition of Vina Italy will be held the 2nd through the 5th of April 2023. Remember to subscribe to Italian Wine Podcast and catch us on SoundCloud, Spotify, and wherever you get your pods. You can also find us at italianwinepodcast.com. Cin cin! guys, I'm Joy Livingston and I am the producer of the Italian Wine Podcast. Thank you for listening. We are the only wine podcast that has been doing a daily show since the pandemic began. This is a labor of love and we are committed to bringing you free content every day. Of course, this takes time and effort, not to mention the cost of equipment, production and editing. We would be grateful for your donations, suggestions, requests and ideas. For more information on how to get in touch, go to italianwinepodcast.com.